first thing I'm going to be making is hot Cheetos chicken. So you're going to need some hot Cheetos. I'm going to crush them up. You're going to need some house archery chicken breading mix. Some canola oil. Some ranch seasoning. And of course, your chicken. And you're going to wash your chicken and pat it dry before transferring it into a bowl because you don't want your skin to be soggy. So patting it dry is very important. Now you're going to take two capfuls of canola oil and drizzle it over the chicken. And then you're going to take your ranch seasoning and season it. I didn't end up using the whole packet, but um, I did use most of it. But I didn't want it to be too salty or anything like that. And also, you can use other seasonings if you want. It doesn't have to be this one. So I actually found this recipe online. And um, I gave it a try. And um, Mike and Asia ended up really liking it. So I figured I would share it with you guys. And your chicken should end up looking something like this. And now it's time to coat it. So... You're just going to take your hot Cheetos bowl and you're going to take some of the house archery and you're just going to sprinkle some in the bowl and go ahead and mix it. The good thing about this recipe is not only is it good, but as you can see, it's super simple. And if you're not a big hot Cheetos fan, um, I just want to go ahead and tell you it doesn't really taste like hot Cheetos. So I think you should still give it a try. Another thing I actually like about this is that um, we're baking it, but it still has a fried taste to it. So that's a big plus. It's nice and um, crispy. So just go ahead and coat your chicken. Make sure the Cheeto is sticking to the skin. It should look something like this. Go ahead and pop it in the oven at 425 for about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. So now I'm making some mashed potatoes with Yukon Gold potatoes, heavy whipping cream, salt, pepper, butter, and garlic. So the first thing I did was peel the potatoes and then I set them in some cold water and diced them into cubes like so before transferring them into a pot and you're gonna let that pot come to a small boil and then you're gonna you know let it simmer for about 12 to 15 minutes okay once your potatoes are done you're gonna drain them and then you are going to mash them so the next thing I'm gonna do is add a stick of melted butter into my potatoes and then I'm gonna mix them um, I used unsalted butter because I want to be able to control how salty my potatoes are so I used unsalted and I plan on adding salt after my potatoes are done and when you're done go ahead in a separate pot and take one cup of heavy whipping cream and you're gonna bring it to a little simmer now me I added some garlic in mine just to give it some flavor but that's optional so you don't have to do it um, if you do decide to do it make sure that you take the garlic out before pouring your mixture into your potatoes. Now that you've heated that up and removed your garlic, you want to go ahead and pour a little at a time into your mashed potatoes. You don't want to do it all at once. Just a little at a time and then give it a stir. Ha! <laughs> look at Asia. So your potatoes should look something like this and now you can add your salt and pepper and more butter if you want. So now I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my green beans. I use salt, pepper, Cajun seasoning, Italian seasoning, um, butter, and olive oil. So once you've rinsed your green beans off and things like that, you want to go ahead and put them in a bowl, drizzle them with some olive oil, and then you're going to season them with all of the seasonings. Um, I don't have any amounts to give you guys because um, I don't. I just don't. <laughs> But um, I can say don't you don't want to over season them because you don't want them to be too salty. So it's better to under season them than it is to over season them because if you under season them, you can always go back and add some more seasoning. So yeah, now you're just going to give them a stir, mix them up real good, and in just a few seconds we are going to put them in a pan. Put some butter in the pan and. Um, I'm going to have these cook for about 
I'd say about 10 minutes. Um, we like ours a little softer. Uh, we don't like them too, too crunchy. So, yeah. So, I add a little more butter and some garlic to them because I want them to have a garlicky Italian type of taste to them. But, of course, that's optional. So, you don't have to. But, um, yeah, you're going to stir them around a little bit and let them cook for about 10 minutes, like I said. And they're done. So the last thing I'm going to make is some shrimp. Um, I use butter, olive oil, creole seasoning, and a seasoning called Slap Your Mama. <laughs> the Slap Your Mama is pretty much just a spicy seasoning, by the way, in case you've never heard of it. But um, if you don't have any or they don't have any um, at the stores near you, then you can substitute it for any type of Cajun seasoning that you may have. So yeah, just drizzle with olive oil, season, and stir so I put a lot of butter in a pan and let it melt down because I want my shrimp to be buttery and nice and juicy so um, once it melts down go ahead and put them in your pan and you're going to cook them on each side for about three minutes each so it should look something like this and when you flip them they should look something like that um, clearly I'm struggling because I had a camera in one hand, but, um, I just drizzled some of the butter on top of the shrimps, and they're pretty much done after those three minutes are up. So, I'm pretty much done, and this is what everything should look like. Now, the macaroni, I was supposed to share that recipe with you guys, but I made a mistake and missed an ingredient when I was making it, so it didn't come out how it was supposed to, but, um, Everything else is great. And it's really actually funny, the ratio of macaroni to the rest of the food. <laughs> but yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And